Today is December 8th. I'm gonna take a quick look inside, see how the demo went. I've got some electrical wires to move out of the way so Steve can work on the beam. So let's have a look here. <clears throat> All right, so as you can see, this uh, space has been somewhat blocked off. Provides some uh, minimal amount of security while the complete wall is out of the house and there's only plastic between us and the elements. Okay, moving into the demolition area, you can see that there's some holes supporting the upper dormer roof. There's also a temporary wall holding up the kitchen roof, or ceiling rather, and in the very center is the VX cable hanging down that had the light switch and the outdoor porch light attached to it. I have to move that for Steve. Uh, here's a spot that I put the uh, workspace LED lights so Steve can see what he's doing and uh, give him a little more light so he can do some magic. Okay, here's a good look at the LED light that was in the porch light. So that fixture is hanging from this BX cable. This is a metal shielded cable and it runs up to the switch. That switch turned on and off the porch light and the light in the kitchen. So that went up into the ceiling and it connected up in between those joists. So I have to get that remove, removed so Steve can do his work. Now going across, Steve's cut all the uh, wall joists out of the way and he still has some work to do in this corner, but you can see he's got the wall stripped uh, all the way down to the uh, outside of the, or the uh, inside of the house, which is on the, facing the outside of the driveway. So he's got that pretty much demoed out. This is the gap in between the new construction and the old, where the floor joists supported the wall. So there's a space there that needs to be filled up with some uh, material. Um, there's uh, this wall here that you're looking at now, that's uh, on the side of the adjacent bathroom um, space. So there's some more joists he's got to pull out there, and then we're, we're back to the top, and we're going to go uh, across uh, to where that cable is. So that's a circular view of that perimeter. Okay, that's been removed. I put a box in there. I marked what breaker it's for. You can just tuck that into the joist beams. Um, you know, just kind of hide it in between the joists. Okay, we're on our way into the dump. Dum, da dum, dum, dum. Okay, heading into the landfill again. This is our second run with demo from the kitchen project. This is the access road. This brings us straight down to where the scale is. We get on the scale, we got a before weight. Then we receive instructions to offload our debris. Then we come back onto the scale and get a empty weight. And they take the difference and figure out how many pounds of dump, dump junk you dropped off. And then you pay accordingly. It's $200 a ton. So that's a pretty good price, especially when you have somewhere to get rid of things. Here's the process, okay. Here's the scale, coming on the scale. And we stop in front of the speaker and receive instructions. What do you have? Got demo. Okay, number two, please. Thank you. Number two is the dumpster that we're gonna put this debris in. So we follow this demo road to the demolition drop-off. Follow the arrows. This is the road into the dump. I'll call the cool machinery. Over there in the background is all the leaves that they're composting. You can see some of the paper bags. And over here is the finished compost that's going to be available in the spring. Nice dark um, uh, material, great for gardens. We continue following the uh, arrows on the Jersey Barriers, and we're looking for dumpster number two. And it looks like we already have somebody there dropping off their stuff.
so all this debris right here in this corner of the dumpster came out of the dump trailer right there and all that's left inside is the metal from the radiator shroud and uh, overhead light this goes in the metal pile with that drop off done we can head back onto the scale so let's do a little drive by here's the appliance corral with all the refrigerant that needs to be evacuated this is the back side of the dumpsters that accept various items and there's a Dirt berm so nobody can sneak out of here without getting on the scale. <laughs> I'm sure that's happened once or twice. Uh, all kinds of different things in here to grab. I'm not sure if some of this is old equipment or these are just some scores that people made up here and they just stashed till they can come up later with something to move it in. There's the fuel tanks. Plow. Here's the methane burn off area. That thing up there. And we're going to get back on the scale. So as you can see, someone's on the scale now. They're going to get off the scale, and they let the next person come on in. So one in, one out. Okay, this time around we had 0.26 of a ton, which comes out to $51. And I'm going to head over right here to the metal pile. I have a radiator shroud that I gotta dump into this place right here and put it where it belongs. Okay, last time I missed the tour of the paint shack. So this is it here. So you put all your paint products in here and this is disposed of properly. So there's all manner of paint stain, stains, uh, turpentines, all kinds of stuff in here. So this is a good spot if you need some paint, come on and get all you want. <laughs> so there it is there. And this is in partner with uh, the state of Connecticut. So the nice little shed with all the paint in it. We interrupt this regularly scheduled program to introduce the X8 Apex Fantix Tire Inflator. This comes in really handy when you get to the dump and you realize your trailer tire is low. This is a cordless thing. You plug it right in. You don't need no any, uh, anything plugging into the car. You set it to the PSI you want, and when it hits it, it stops. So you can see I got it. I got it set at uh, at 40 pounds. It's at 36, so it should shut off in another four pounds, and this tire will be back in business. We've got a heavy load with all this mulch here, so I don't want to have a flat tire on the way home and end up with any issues. Okay, that concludes the uh, dump run business. And I had a conversation with our contractor, Steve, and one of the things that we both agreed upon was that we need some better security on the porch while the wall is missing. <laughs> Pretty obvious, huh? Well, we do have the screened in area and it's covered in tarps and plastic to keep the weather out, but that uh, doesn't necessarily prevent anybody who has an inflation to get in there and steal some tools or get into the house or for that matter the cat getting out <laughs> and taking a hike into the great outdoors so we're going to work on a plan tomorrow uh, bare minimum put a lock on the door for the screen door uh, that's kind of a rudimentary first step 
but I also thought it might be a good idea maybe um, either sheet the outside with some plywood and put a like a, a hasp and a lock or maybe even take I have some wire fencing that I could uh, adhere to the at least the bottom half of the porch posts so nobody can come and go through the plastic uh, either way there's also a secondary uh, security measure which would be to put an alarm on the door with a magnetic switch I have one of those kicking around somewhere down in the cellar so I could easily uh, rig up something that if somebody walks in opens the door an alarm goes off scares them away I also have a uh, a siren which I can rig up to that and I have some police lights flashing lights so I can have a siren a car alarm and police lights that definitely scares somebody away who opens that door is not supposed to <laughs> so I think I'm gonna rig that all up and uh, not tell Steve it's connected and when he walks up up and inside to do his next batch of work he'll get surprised by that alarm system uh, in a true effort to show them the effectiveness of the alarm itself um, might scare the bejesus out of them but be kind of funny and he'll, he'll know that I'm uh, taking care of keeping his secure his, his tools secure and uh, the workspace uh, secure as well from any uh, you know curious people who uh, may not be honest with uh, what they see and what they decide they don't want to take something so we don't want uh, Steve's tools to go disappearing and we don't want any you know strangers come making it into the house so that's the plan for tomorrow along with uh, cleaning out some more stuff we got the kitchen pretty much cleared out today we took out the lighting fixture on the ceiling and the light fixture and the doorbell and the switch on the wall that turned on the outside porch light so that's all done found out that circuit one on our circuit panel so I disconnected everything uh, put a junction box with a cover marked the cover with uh, breaker number one so in the future we know which one we got to turn off and we've got to reconnect back up to that circuit uh, so that that concluded uh, like the kitchen demo there's a, a couple more cabinets to remove but we're gonna leave them there for now until we really need to get them out we still need to use the sink and the stove on occasion so uh, we in another week or so we might have to get that out but for now I like to keep it there the adjacent room needs to get cleared out we have a china closet some bookcases and some other miscellaneous items that need to get get out of there so we're working on that this weekend because the next wall to come down is the wall between the den and the kitchen so that uh, workspace has to be cleared and ready for Steve to do his magic. That's it for now. Dave out. In case you're all wondering, yeah, I haven't shaved in a while. I'm trying to focus all my efforts on the kitchen renovation and uh, spend a little time eating and sleeping, shaving and bathing. So there's that. Uh, it works for me. We're making some really great headway. Me and Steve are kind of tag team in the project. Gave us a really good price and uh, with the expectation that I lend a hand with the things he's not uh, comfortable working on, like the plumbing and the electric and taking stuff to the dump so he doesn't have to get a, you know, range for a dumpster and all that stuff. So there's a lot of things I've been doing that's over and above the Call of Duty, but uh, these are things that need to get done in conjunction with the uh, kitchen renovation <clears throat> so we uh, you know they're like I'm just helping out <laughs> and uh, it's going fast and we're getting making a lot of headway so uh, also this weekend we're gonna look at some appliances and uh, get a handle on what we want to put in there for new stuff and uh, we know weigh our options on cabinets and stuff so that's all Kind of a work in progress. And we'll uh, just keep moving, keep, keep doing what we're doing. Dave out.